Role-playing games are a hobby that I enjoy but don't engage in very much. I've played a handful of Dungeons & Dragons sessions, but the campaigns inevitably fall apart just a few games in. Most of my engagement in the hobby comes from reading the source books and creating potential characters to play as. With a lot of my hobbies, I enjoy dabbling in creating my own mods or homebrew to engage in the material on a deeper level. Most of the time, this is just for my own enjoyment, and these projects never really materialize into anything. About a decade ago, I created a homebrew player character option for D&D, featuring anthropomorphic mice. Unlike most of my flights of fancy, I actually released this project to a surprising amount of acclaim from other D&D players. These mouse folk really resonated with people. Today, I'm going to paint some mice miniatures, talk a bit about the creation of the mouse folk, as well as the intimidation of a sophomore slump. The mouse folk are a race of diligent and hardworking craftsmen, scholars, and fighters. Their small, unassuming stature belies a tenacity to survive in a dangerous world of gods and monsters. Those who would see them as easy prey soon discover why they thrive in the most inhospitable corners of the world. If you've read the incredible Mouse Guard comic series by Mr. David Peterson, you may see the similarities between those mice and the mouse folk. The project was heavily inspired by the comic and I'd be the first one to tell you that. I read Mouse Guard and thought, how do I play this in D&D? I studied the character races in the D&D Player's Guide to get an understanding of power level and the design space that the other races were composed in. I absolutely hate overpowered homebrew. I wanted the mouse folk to feel like they could fit seamlessly into the player's handbook. I finished my first draft and released it to the community for feedback. The concept really appealed to people and the feedback was constructive and positive. I made a few changes and designed a document in the same style and layout as the player's handbook. I could not have predicted what would happen when I uploaded the final product. The mouse folk were a hit, bigger than I ever could have imagined. Within hours, I had hundreds of comments praising the mouse folk. People were excited to play mouse folk characters and populate their world with mouse folk communities. They loved the player's handbook style presentation and asked me to show them how I did it. There was a near unanimous praise for the power level and balance of the race. Every goal that I set out to achieve with the project, the presentation, the flavor, and the balance were all in alignment. It felt like Mouse Guard. It felt like Redwall. It felt like it always should have been there to begin with. Soon after the post, I started seeing people sharing memorable moments from their games when they were playing with Mouse Folk. People were using something that I made in their own games. They were making the mouse folk their own. As I mentioned before, I never anticipated the mouse folk to be as successful as it became. Some people asked me what my next homebrew was going to be, and I wasn't really sure how to respond. I felt that because the mouse folk were so well received, the next project I did had to somehow be even better. I was putting pressure on myself to outdo what was essentially a fun thought experiment. I didn't want to be caught in a sophomore slump where my second project wouldn't measure up to the first. This mindset was part of the reason why I never made another homebrew for D&D. The other part being that I don't even play the game that much. Like so many other projects, I hyper fixated on it for a couple days and then moved on. Instead of being intimidated by my past success, I now look at the mouse folk and say to myself, wouldn't it be cool to make something even more popular than this? I think that that's a healthier approach to art in the creative process. If I could impart any wisdom that I've learned from the success of the mouse folk, it would be this. Letting fear of failure stop you from making something is worse than actually making that thing and having it be a little disappointing. Your best thing should be aspirational, not prohibitive. If you don't get the results you want, you can and should try again. Not making anything would be the real failure. I want to thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've been Sky from The Cozy Painter.
And until next time, stay cozy. Thank you.